Hello, my name is Dr. Ron Dalton Jr. and in this video we're going to be talking about acetaminophen um, which is commonly known as Tylenol and we're basically going to talk about everything that you need to know about it. So we'll be talking about how it works, any side effects that can come from it, what the dosages are, um, if there's any drug interactions or interactions with nutritional supplements, and then we'll talk about some alternatives at the end that you may not be aware of. So to start with, let's talk about what acetaminophen actually is. This is in a drug class known as analgesics or pain relievers and antipyretics, which means that it's a fever reducer. Now the common name that you'll see on the shelf is Tylenol, and it's generally used for mild to moderate pain and fever, and the majority of people will use this for pain basically. So that's the approach that we're going to take in this video. Now the way that this works is that acetaminophen will relieve pain by, or by elevating the pain threshold and what that means is that it requires a greater amount of pain to develop before a person actually feels it. And I'm going to show you a couple images of what that is in a minute because this may be a foreign concept to you. Um, but one thing I want to point out is that it does absolutely nothing for inflammation and this is a really really important point because a lot of times pain is caused by a process called inflammation and we'll explain what that is in a minute as well. Um, now acetaminophen will also reduce fever through its action on the heat regulating center of the brain and basically what it does is it tells the brain to lower the body's temperature when the temperature is elevated. So let's talk about the pain threshold and how this actually works. Now what you're going to see is if we look at this image over here on the left hand side of the screen, um, whenever a person experiences pain, that's actually a chemical reaction that's occurring in the body that is sensed by your nervous system. So what happens is that whenever you have an injury or whenever you have a problem developing, the body will start to release chemicals in that area. Now the way that your body is designed is that we have something called a pain threshold. And what that means is that you can tolerate so many of these chemicals being produced and until you have enough of that chemical being produced that it actually hits the pain threshold or exceeds the pain threshold you won't actually feel any pain or any symptoms from it so you won't even know that you have a problem developing there um, and a, a good analogy to this is when we look at this glass of water here if you imagine this glass of water and the top of the water being your pain threshold if we fill this glass of water up with just a little bit of water, yeah, there's a problem developing and you have some of those chemicals being developed, but until it reaches the top of the glass and it starts to overflow, um, you're not going to feel any pain because you haven't hit the pain threshold yet. And that's basically how the pain threshold works within the body. So what acetaminophen does is it basically makes this glass larger, okay? So what it's doing is it's elevating your pain threshold so that you have to have even more of those chemicals being produced before you feel any symptoms. Now like I said a minute ago though the problem with this is that a lot of pain is actually coming from a process called inflammation. Now inflammation will typically occur um, in a couple of different circumstances. Number one is when you have an injury and we call that acute inflammation. The second is what we call chronic inflammation which is basically diseases of the body that are associated with inflammation. So we're dealing with things like allergies, asthma, um, heart disease, cancer, uh, lung diseases, all of these things are associated with chronic inflammation. But let's talk about acute inflammation first because that's ideally what we're talking about when you're taking acetaminophen or when you're considering taking that medication. Um, now like I said, it, that medication does absolutely nothing for inflammation, but what the process is is this when you have an injury the body is going to try to fix that injury basically and the way that it does that is by rushing a lot of blood to the area because blood is what contains all of the oxygen and nutrients that your body needs in order to heal properly. So the body is going to rush a lot of blood to the injured area and what's going to happen is because of that Yes, it sounds good on the surface because we're getting blood and we're getting nutrients and oxygen to the area, but the problem is that the area is going to swell up because of this increase in blood flow. And it's going to get hot to the touch because blood is warm, and it's going to get even more irritated. And that's what the process of inflammation is. Now, with acetaminophen, because it's not affecting this, a lot of times it won't even be effective for your pain that you're trying to alleviate. Um, and the other thing that you want to ask yourself is, okay, if all I'm doing 
doing with this medication is raising the pain threshold, is that really a good approach to take when I'm dealing with the problem? Because you're not addressing the underlying issue. All you're doing is making it more difficult for your body to know that there's a problem that exists there. So you may want to keep that in the back of your mind and think about that for a minute because this may not be the best option for you if you're really looking to heal the condition rather than just cover it up and hide it. Now the recommended dosages for acetaminophen, I'm not going to go over because I've actually written all of this out for you in an article on my website and I'm going to give you a link to that at the end of this video. So if you're watching this on YouTube, just stay with me for a little bit here and I'll give you that link later. But you can look through these dosages on your own. The one thing that I want to point out though is that you should never use acetaminophen for more than 10 days if you're treating pain and more than four days if you're treating a fever unless a physician has directed you to do so and the reason for that is because of some of the side effects that you can get from this medication which we'll cover in just a second. But first let's talk about drug interactions and contraindications which means times where you should not be taking acetaminophen. There are two drugs in particular that stand out. The first one is called Tegretol, and this is an anti-seizure medication. And the other one is Rifampin, which is for tuberculosis. What these two medications do is they increase the activity of the liver, and acetaminophen is actually processed and eliminated by your liver. So if you're taking one of these two medications, it will make the acetaminophen less effective because it's going to increase the um, speed at which the liver gets rid of the drug. The other one is warfarin, which is an oral blood thinner, and anticoagulant, and this is used a lot of times for people who have blood clots, um, and sometimes they'll even use it for people who have heart conditions. But basically what happens is that acetaminophen will increase the blood thin thinning effect of this drug, which can be a major problem because when a person is taking this medication, because it's thinning the blood, you'll develop a problem with blood clotting. And so if you cut yourself, it'll have a harder time not ble not bleeding. Okay, so, so that's the bottom line with this. You don't want to mix those two together. They say that acetaminophen can be used during pregnancy and also while breastfeeding, although they do say that um, the medication will be excreted in breast milk, so you may want to be conscious of that. But they do say that, that, that they haven't seen any long-term effect of that either. You never want to drink alcohol while taking acetaminophen because this can cause liver damage. So you want to avoid alcohol at all costs. And then the only natural supplement that you would not want to take with it is called milk thistle. And if you've never heard of this before, this is a nutritional supplement that's used for liver diseases such as hepatitis, cirrhosis, and even gallstones some people will use this for. But if you take this with acetaminophen, you increase the risk of developing liver damage from it. So you don't want to mix those two together. The most common side effect of acetaminophen is liver damage, and this is the reason why they say you should never take it for more than 10 days at a time, um, because this is actually pretty serious. And according to the FDA, acetaminophen is the leading cause of drug-induced acute liver failure in the United States. So it actually is a pretty serious complication, and it's more common than you may imagine. A lot of people will look at some of these medications and they'll think to themselves, well, because I can get this over the counter, it must be safe. And that's really not the case, and especially when you're looking at something like this. So let's talk about some alternatives. Now, like I said at the beginning, we're going to approach this as though you're looking at taking this medication for the purpose of pain relief. And if you have an acute injury, which means that you just sustained an injury of some sort and is causing you pain, the, the biggest thing that I can tell you, and probably the most important thing, is the use of ice and heat. I have not found any medication or any other treatment besides ice and heat that can give you more relief, especially if you're dealing with inflammation or an inflammatory process. Now let me explain to you how you would use ice and heat um, in order to reduce the pain. First of all, if you have a fresh injury and you're feeling pain, you never want to put heat on that. And this makes a lot of sense if you think about how I explained that the inflammatory process takes place. Remember that I explained to you that the body is sending blood to the area so it's going to swell up and get hot? Well, if you think about this, if you put heat on top of something that's already hot, it's just going to draw more blood to the area, cause more swelling, and give you more pain. So never use heat if you have a fresh injury. 
In that case, you always want to use ice. And the way that you would do this is you want to use real ice. So go ahead and just get ice from the freezer and put it in a baggie. Never use frozen vegetables or ice packs or anything of that nature. And the reason that you want to use real ice is because it will maintain a constant temperature throughout the entire treatment, which is what we want to accomplish with this. Go ahead and put a towel down or something over the skin and then put it on top of that. Leave the ice on for 15 minutes maximum or until you feel numbness in the area, whichever comes first. And then you want to take it off for an hour and then repeat the treatment again. Do that as many times in the day as you possibly can. And most of my patients, if you do this the way that I just explained, usually they'll experience a lot of relief within just a couple of days. So it really works well. Now, the only time that this is not the case is if you have a condition such as arthritis, or more of a long-term type of a pain. Um, if that's the case, usually you have some type of degenerative process going on in that injured area, and so ice can sometimes make that feel worse. So what I want you to do is to do a little test. And the way that you do this is to use ice just the way that I recommended just three or four times. Do it three or four times in a row and see how you feel. If you feel better, then stick with the ice. If you feel the same or if you feel worse, discontinue the ice treatment and try heat instead. Now usually with heat, dry heat is going to feel better. And an example of dry heat would be just an electric heating pad that you can find at any drugstore usually. So um, follow the same rules. So you want to put it on for 15 minutes, take it off an hour, and then repeat it. Most of the time if the ice doesn't help or if it feels worse, that's when heat is the is going to be called for and you'll typically get a lot more relief from the heat in that specific situation but try the ice first because usually the ice is going to feel a lot better and one thing i'm going to tell you is i know sometimes i tend to speak a little bit fast <laughs> um if you can't keep up with that information like i said i'm going to be giving you a web page that you can go to at the end of this video and all of this will be written out for you but also I have a free ebook that you can sign up for, and it'll be to the left of this video on that page. And in that free ebook, I outline all of the details about ice and heat that I just recommended for you. The next thing that you can do as an alternative is something called proteolytic enzymes. Now, these are fantastic. There's a person. There's a um, certain brand that I usually recommend is called Heal and Soothe, and I'll include a link to that on the page where I'll send you to after this. But um, the reason I like these is because what they will do is they will actually help reduce the inflammatory process by cleaning up all those chemicals that are causing your pain. So it doesn't matter if you're trying to increase your pain threshold or if you're trying to reduce inflammation. These proteolytic enzymes will help because they're going to reduce the inflammatory process and they're going to get rid of those chemicals so that they don't hit your pain threshold any longer. So Heal and Soothe is something that I cannot recommend enough. It's a really, really great product. The next thing you want to do is take something called probiotics, and you can find these at any local health food store. But if you're in pain or if you're having symptoms, you want to take four times the recommended amount on the bottle per day. And these are going to have a similar effect to the enzymes, where basically what they're going to do is they're going to um, help eliminate some of those chemicals that are causing your pain. Vitamin D3 is the next thing that I recommend, and this is also something you can find at a health food store. And you want to take 20,000 international units per day. And that may sound like a lot to you, but really when you get the bottle, you're going to see there's just four little tiny tablets. It's, it's really not a lot to take each day. But this is something that I recommend not just for people in pain, but also if you're trying to just live a healthier lifestyle, because taking that amount of vitamin D has actually been shown to reduce um, chronic conditions such as heart disease, cancer, um, and other problems like that. So vitamin D3 is really something that you want to be taking on a daily basis, even if you're not in pain. It really makes a huge difference as far as your health is concerned. Now, if you have any type of a chronic inflammatory condition, and like I said, these are things like heart disease, cancer, lung problems, allergies, asthma, all these things that are chronic problems, these are related to inflammation. In those types of cases, usually you've got a much larger problem that you're dealing with, and the problem is actually your diet. So if you notice that that's a problem, or if you just want to start doing some things differently to try to make sure that you prevent those problems from developing in the future, what you want to do is you want to look at these tips here. First of all, 
you want to eliminate all sugar from your diet. And I realize that sounds really difficult, um, but this is the one key thing. If you do nothing else that I'm going to tell you to do here in this video, that's the one thing that you want to do because sugar has a huge effect on increasing the amount of inflammation within your body. And this is not healthy for you. So eliminate sugars and that should be the first and most important thing that you do. You also want to eliminate white flour from your diet. So things like white breads, pasta, all those things that taste good but we know are probably not healthy for us. You want to reduce that amount because this is going to have the same effect. It will increase the inflammatory effect within your body. So we want to get rid of those from our diet if possible. A good rule to follow is this. If you're reading a label on a food item in your grocery store and it has more than six grams of carbs in it, I wouldn't eat it, especially if you have a chronic condition that you're trying to help You know, in this situation. You want to try to avoid those as much as possible. The final thing that you want to do is to increase your fruits and vegetables. Typically, you want to go organic if you can. And this used to be something that was not cost effective for a lot of people, but really the price on organic fruits and vegetables has gone down quite a bit. So this is within grasp. Y you can find organic fruits and vegetables at pretty much any health food or any um, uh, grocery store these days. So they're not hard to find. They're not that much more expensive. So really, if you can do that, that would be the ideal situation. But one thing that I can tell you is that for me personally, this is something that's always been a problem because I don't particularly care for fruits and vegetables. So I bought myself this product called a Nutribullet and I have fallen in love with this thing. I use it every single day. And what I do is basically it's, it's a type of a blender, but it has a special attachment on it. And what it will do is it will take your fruits and vegetables and it'll blend it into a drink, but it makes the nutrients within the fruits and vegetables more accessible so that they're easier to be absorbed by your body. So this thing is really actually pretty amazing and it's not that expensive. But what the drink is that I make every day is I, I make a drink that has spinach, apple, pear, pineapple, and banana. And you just basically put it into the cup that it comes with. You put a little water in there and you mix it all up and it turns into a nice drink. And it actually tastes pretty good. But this drink is designed to cleanse your body. If you're in pain or if you're experiencing a health condition that you believe is due to chronic inflammation, you want to go ahead and also add one inch of fresh ginger root to that drink because that's been shown to reduce inflammation pretty quickly for people. If you're in a really bad spot and if you're having some really major symptoms, I would recommend that you drink one of those twice a day. So I would just do one in the morning and then one at night. If you're not in that serious of a condition, if you're just looking to improve your health, I would do just one a day. Okay, And that's basically what I do for myself personally. Now, if you found this information useful and you'd like to get more information, or if you'd like to actually go to that article that I talk about, here is the link. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, if you look below the video, you'll see a description area there. And I have this link in that description so that you can just click on it and go right to this page. But what I've done in this article is I've written out everything that's in this video. Um, I've also given you the resources. So any of those things that I talked about, like the um, Heal and Soothe or the Ice and Heat Instructions, that sort of thing, you can find all of that on this page below the video here. And like I said as well, um, I offer a free ebook, and you'll see it's the left side of the video on that page. And you can sign up for that if you want to get the more specific instructions about Ice and Heat for you. All right. Well, thank you so much for spending your time with me watching this video. I hope that you found it helpful and have a great day.